Yeah. Yeah. I would get around Travels on the wind Turns up at your door it Just flows right in Since you've been down the river With a lovable fake Learn that talk is cheap Talk with N-T-Y You're late I heard you back in town Wood gets around Gets around Wood gets around Wood gets around Wood gets around Wood gets around from the ceiling to the floor. You hear a little whisper, you gotta hear some more. When our time was over, we were flickering flame. I looked up at the sky, and nothing seemed the same. Used to be your town. Wood gets around. Wood gets around. Wood gets around. Wood gets around. Coming in from the big world. Coming in from the big wide world. Coming in from the big world. Coming in from the big wide world. Yeah, wood gets around, crosses any ocean, it's in the air you're breathing, it sets the heart in motion. Wood gets around, wood gets around, wood gets around, wood gets around. Barry Stoner's on a lead guitar, ladies and gentlemen. Give him a round of applause, a big wide and upper welcome to this newcomer, young kid on the block, Barry Saunders. <laughs> coming in from the big world, coming in from the big wide world. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. <laughs> Woo. Wow. Well, that was one of the best starts to a gig I've ever um, <laughs> emceed. What do you think? It's all down from here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I really have uh, not very big a role to play in here. All I've got to do is usher these two gentlemen through the next hour and make sure that you have as much fun as possible. Uh, Delaney Davidson, Barry Saunders, I am amongst great company up here. Big round of applause, please. Thank you. So this is, this is really a chat about friendship and music, I think. And I'd love to know um, how you two first got to know each other. I think it's quite a good story. I think there'll be two separate stories. but um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like every good couple. My story was that I went down to visit my family in Christchurch, went over to Littleton, didn't know Delaney or Marlon or any of those people. We all ended up in a cafe together. And a massive earthquake struck. And that was it's sort of like the stuff that uh, myths are made of. Yeah. But that we were forged in molten rock. <laughs> and and uh, that's how we... That was the very beginning. Yeah. That's incredible. I hadn't realised that, you know, that connection between the earthquake, like earth shattering, quite frankly. Mm. And Delaney, what's your recollection, though? You're looking a little bit sceptical here. Where no, were no, you? I think I'll go with Barry's story. It's much better than my one. <laughs> But yeah, that was a real, um, there was a lot of people in that cafe, me, Marlon, were talking about our first album we wanted to record, Barry was inside, there's other people and we were 
we were actually all really lucky that the owner of the cafe had done some pre-earthquake times, earthquake strengthening. I just remember seeing the building, the bottom half of it going like this. Same. And the top half going like this. <laughs> and these bricks in the middle look like wobbly teeth, just Whoa. sort of falling out willy-nilly. <laughs> um, and it, yeah, there had been some really structural um, bracing put in place inside this building, which stopped the whole thing collapsing in. But um, wow. yeah, we were we were pretty. Um, I mean, it's hard to remember that time because my memory is really uh, scattered in a in a weird way. That it's it's bits and pieces of memories. It's not a, a smooth flowing event of being in that building on that day. It was being halfway in the air, leaping out of the chair yeah. I was in, or seeing the building over the road falling in, or That's right. just yeah. Yeah. crazy pictures. Well, the, and, the, and the road um, going like a ribbon. Yeah. Yeah, that was what my one when I ran out of there. Yeah. The, road, the road was like a ribbon. But it's a classic story of a whole lot of people being... Uh, I mean, it blew a lot of people apart, but it sort of also blew a lot of people together, mm. you know? Yeah. So... Uh, the lady and I are part of that, and um, probably Marlon and our pal Al Park down there, and lots of other people. Yeah. So I'm not, you know, I haven't got entirely bad memories of it, but I don't <laughs> want to do it again. No, no, that's no. right. <laughs> so, I mean, you've both collaborated and, and with, with lots of other people. What, what makes your collaboration, you know, Barry and Delaney, what, what is the, what's the special source between you two? Well, I guess we, we probably both look like old guys to you young folk out there, but um, we, <laughs> my memory of first hearing about Barry Saunders was my dad going out to um, a gig in Christchurch at a football club and he came back and he was just raving about this band that played and he was saying it was kind of like Hank Williams. It was like going out to some Hank Williams event and people were just dancing and having a good time. <clears throat> And later on when we were doing the um, churches tour that uh, we first really sort of played around each other um, on, I remember um, I would do it, I would be sound checking my loop machine and I'd just sort of set a loop going and wander off out in the room to see what it sounded like and Barry would get up on the microphone and be singing along to it and we're kind of circling around each other, checking out what each other did. But um, Someone said something like Barry kind of turned a light on in a room in a house back in the um, back in the eighties or seventies, or that, and that the room was like some awareness of this Americana country music, and that light stayed on through a couple of decades until um, around that earthquake time we started exploring Americana and folk music in Littleton, and Barry had kind of always been sitting in this room waiting for us to catch up to him somehow. So. <laughs> That's I, I think of that when I think about what we do together. There's a real, there's a generational meeting somehow. Yeah, yeah. And also when we, our our, uh, our publisher, uh, our Native Tongue, Chris Goff of Native Tongue, they had a a uh, sort of a writers' convention in the Wire Rapper, and uh, that's where we first okay. actually wrote anything together. And I, I've forgotten about all that till today. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm we, glad you're we, remembering we, now. This yeah. is great. <laughs> and um, so we wrote a bunch of songs, and they went toward the uh, Wood Gets Around album. Yeah, I think, I mean, doing that uh, tour, the churches tour, we'd been circling around each other, just kind of going, oh, so um, what does this guy do, and how do, how do we do something? We've been spoken about wanting to work together, but Barry, Barry takes a while to make a decision, but he always makes the right one, so... Um, <laughs> Eventually we ended up being in this kitchen on that Native Tongue songwriting camp and these songs were just coming so fast. That's right, yeah. It was like quick start something recording and just go hard because these ideas just, I think we wrote like three songs in an hour or something, they just came so fast. So we're just kind of catching them. You, you described it like throwing ideas at my head and watching them bounce That's off. off yeah. <laughs> I was going through a hard breakup at the time. We were um, all going through funny things at the time. I was yeah. really in love with someone and it wasn't going anywhere. And I remember Barry kind of, it was like he could read me. And he was going, oh, okay, this and this. And we wrote the song, um, It's Out of Our Hands, which had this really nice, nothing happens here, 
Each and every day is just another day. I got everything that a man could need. I'm lucky in my own way. And he was just sort of saying, yeah, write down this, do this, do this. And I was sort of playing these chords and it was just all, it's amazing when the, the music and the words all come together at the same time. Yeah. So this was one of those moments. And I'd never really written with anyone before. I mean, I've got, I'm on credits with people, but only in a way of sort of gluing things together. I'd never actually sat down before Delaney and um, consciously written something. Mm. So it was a really, uh, was quite a, uh, quite a, quite a time for me to, to create something with someone else. It's great. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, you know, like a new chapter for you both. Yeah. At a time when you both needed it, by the yeah. sounds of it. Yeah. Walking into another room. Yeah. 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 The yeah, one that you'd always been in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're getting so meta here. Um, <laughs> Love it. So, um, <clears throat> word gets around uh, 2019, and um, you described that uh, incredible kind of moment where you know words are literally kind of falling out of the sky, and you're and you're harnessing them. Did that energy peter out, or were you was it the same energy that's behind the whole album? What's the arc, that story arc, like? I think it stayed. Uh, I think it stayed with us through that whole project, mm. and it's still with us now. I mean, it's one of those things that, that um, probably doesn't pay to think about it too much. It's just yeah. sort of, uh, yeah. it's an energy that we have. But when we're together, we generally produce something. Yeah. And um, I don't know where it comes from. I, it's a, sort of just a cross-pollination that yeah. works. Yeah. Yeah. I think we um, definitely, that's, that's there, that energy, that, that other realm of creative juice or whatever you want to call it but um i think yeah it was definitely there for the first album and then there's a realization that you can write and you can write songs and create stuff but then there's this really terrible thing that happens which is called making an album and that's like <laughs> squeeze recording <laughs> sessions time money and then the next terrible thing of album, <laughs> album cover liner notes isrc codes to register them in the huge database in the sky. Oh, God. Platforms, videos for the songs. There's <laughs> a lot of work you got to do. So I think we're a bit more careful now about cranking out a million songs because we're like, oh, <laughs> shit, yeah. now look what we got to do. All the admin that happens afterwards. <laughs> so yeah. speak, I mean, we just got a second album ready. It's um, being mastered. We're pretty happy with that. So that's a fusion again of this weird mm. cohesive songwriting body we've created we actually got an award um delaney davidson and barry saunders for the best country artist Oh, yeah. that's, <laughs> so, that's something to think about there yeah. because it, it kind of is and if you look on the album cover which we have for sale down here you'll see there's a shadow that is one being oh. and that's made up of both of us and this is a theme we kind of like because I think we're allowed to feature parts of ourselves in our songwriting together that maybe people don't get to normally see or we don't let them go so easily. Mm. But, um, yes, yeah, so anyway, when we're getting back to that second album, when we sat down and we put it all together, we were looking at other demos we've got that we haven't used and there's definitely a third album just sitting there. So um, I think the creativity and that spark isn't really a problem somehow. It's just more, what do you do with it once you've got the yeah. fruits? Yeah. Um, so you'll all be thrilled. There's a second album. So that's, that's Christmas sorted, all right? Yeah, so um, hands up who's got a copy of the first album. That's amazing that there's so few of you because there's quite a lot of them here. <laughs> that's going to work out really there, well. We can help can't we, later on? <laughs> Definitely will be a different answer if we do that in the now. <laughs> You're on notice, audience. Um, I want to kind of explore some of the, um, the the kind of tone and the feeling of Word Gets Around. So I was um, noodling around with some words today, and it really is an album that's kind of got dirt under its fingernails. There's something really, you know, mm. gritty about it. Mm. Um, is, is that a characterization you're comfortable with, or are, are there other words you would use? <laughs> No, I think that's a good uh, good description of it. Actually, it's got uh, quite a lot of blues in it, in a funny, yeah. funny sort of a way. Uh, a lot of that comes from Delaney's guitar playing, and um, and mine, <laughs> and uh, and uh, and 
the, 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 it, it's it's quite a punchy sort of an album. Yeah. There's not, there's I mean, it starts big, yeah, doesn't it? Yeah, you put it on and it sort of grabs hold of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah it does. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But, it, but both of you are very rooted in this place, Aotearoa. You know, it's, it seems very important to you yeah. both. Um, and Barry, I know, you, you know, you did try and, and, and leave the country and kind of, you know, you've been around a bit and you've yeah. come back he, again. He and wasn't he was allowed. Well. Yeah. He wasn't allowed. <laughs> And, and also you've had some spells abroad. But what is it about this place um, that, that really sings to your soul and, and gets this creativity wrenched out of you? I think it's sort of a, it's, it's, it's a lot of things. I mean, with the Waratahs, we travelled a lot in those first 10 years. And movement produces lots of feelings and imagery. And um, just the land, mostly, I would say. The land, the light... The light and the land and the rivers and the hills and and everything and how we sort of live in amongst it all, and um, that's found its way into the song somehow. Not always directly, but certainly got that overall feeling to it. Yeah. Delaney, how 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 has this this place kind of impacted you and your? That's life? home. That's the yeah. yeah. You know, it's in your blood. It's the water tastes like home. You sleep different down in Canterbury than you do anywhere else. It's just a, <laughs> I don't know, I talk with Marlon a lot about these ideas. We talk about this idea of whenua tanga. It's like these are, the un, these are the laws of the land that if you live in this land, you will start, this stuff will start to make sense to you. Mm. And it feels like tikanga has a lot of that in it as well. Yeah. It's right and it feels right for mm. a reason. So, yeah. I mean, I've, yeah, I've lived years in Australia, years in Europe, spent a lot of time in the States, but always when you come back here it's like it makes sense yeah yeah same here i've toured australia a lot and worked in england a lot and also this it's really it's really nice to play to your own people yeah like that feeling yeah mm. um there's one track in particular uh, that kind of speaks from my interpretation directly to to the land and that's stolen river yeah. Um, and that's very poignant. Kind of comes about midway through the album. That's right, um, yeah. And it's quite plaintive. That's um, right. Yeah, could you, could, could you talk to me about that song? It's, it's pretty powerful stuff. Okay, well, I grew up at Lincoln, uh, first in Taranaki and then at Lincoln. Uh, and the Solwyn River runs past our house, uh, well, a few miles from our house. And then uh, one day it wasn't there anymore. It sort of uh, got used up or dried up or whatever. And uh, I was down there. It was, it was a horrible sight, actually. And because um, we used to eat down there when we were kids, we used to cook dinner down there and stuff and, and um, with our family. And it's, uh, and, a, and a guy came along and he, uh, and when I was looking at it, and he got out of his car and he said, Oh, someone looks like someone's stolen the river, eh? And that's where the, uh, that's where the title came from. Yeah, and there's that lovely lyric, you know, the river runs through our days. You know, there was something so, um, yeah. you know, I've got I've got young kids and we, it just really spoke to me and uh, I think we're all, uh, you know, lots of us in this room will have a connection to the hour and, mm. uh, yeah, it's really, it's it's uh, kind of speaks to our times. Good, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. yeah I'm glad glad you say that. It's, uh, Selwyn's a beautiful river, it runs from... As it says in the song, to the, from the mountain to the sea, mm, yeah, you know, to the yeah. or to the lake Ellesmere, to to the sea, yeah. Have either of you got a particular favourite track off off the um, Word Gets Around album? Is there something that you you love to play the most and might play in a minute? She said, heavily segueing. I said I wouldn't do that. Nice try. I'd, I'd make it really <laughs> and like. Well, I mean, I got I got real favourite <laughs> out of um, out of our hands is one. Of, I love that song, and um, somehow it's the melodic way and the way it just came so fast. It didn't feel like something you laboured over that you're kind of sick of by the time it's finished. It just happened so quick, and we're actually not going to play that for you. Oh, it's got. It's one of my favourites too. <laughs> the reason why it's got so many chords, it's impossible to play. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was quite surf inspired. It kind of felt a bit surfy to me. Surfy. Yeah, surfy. Yeah. Oh, all right. And then, and then I met you both today. I thought, no, maybe not surf. <laughs> yeah, surf music's a dangerous title. Actually, I've heard some really weird things people call surf music. <laughs> what we'd love to do though is play you a song from our uh, our next album that is currently unreleased. 
And this song is called A Man, Man of Few Words. And um, Barry's going to tell you what it's about. Okay, I got this uh, title from uh, Thinking of My Father uh, when we grew up in uh, Taranaki. He had uh, lots of strange friends, sort of big guys. They always seemed so big to me. They didn't seem to say much. And massive hands, <laughs> hair sprouting out their ears, you know. And they were sort of, seemed to be sort of itinerant. I mean, maybe they were escaped prisoners or something like that. I don't know. I don't know who they were, but they just came and went all the time. And uh, I was th thinking of a character out of, uh, who's the song, a cowboy songwriter? Marty Robbins. A uh, character out of a Marty Robbins song. And I thought, yeah, that's what these people are. They're out of, straight out of a Marty Robbins song. They sort of got this mysterious, slightly dangerous way about them. And uh, so his man a few words. Hopefully yeah, we also did. had some concept that it's also about um, w people coming, people who are back from after World War Two, just um, mm. broken, damaged people who didn't really know what to say or how to how to talk. Yeah, sit there listening, not responding, and that kind of silence eating them up. <clears throat> Man of few words Travels all alone You don't need no future You don't need no home You, you don't, don't need no future, future boys You don't, don't need no home. home Outside of the system Outside of the law One ear to the wind one eye on the door, one ear to the wind, boys, one eye on the door. It's all being said before, said the man of few words. It's all being said before, said the man of few words. Man a few words, staring at his hands, thinking of all the trouble in the far out, far off lands. Trouble, 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 trouble in the far off lands. Whole world's, world's going, going crazy, said the man a few words. Yeah, the whole world's going, going crazy. Said the man a few words. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Nobody was talking, nobody looking around, nobody noticed nothing, they just staring at the ground. Staring, staring at the ground, boys, staring at the ground. Somebody said he saw something, hit a man a few words. Is anybody here? Seen the, Seen the man, man a few words. Is anybody here? No, that Seen the man, man a few words. Thank you. Man a few words. That's on the. Uh, the album that we've just made together. Oh, so we have a bit of a preview.
Yes, it's a preview. A pre- that's sure. a preview. Call that a preview. Yeah. Lovely. Um, we've got a beautiful audience here, and I can see some people in the background. Come on in. Come on in. Um, has anybody got any questions for Delaney or Barry or both? Seeing as they are one person, uh, technically. Um, <laughs> Has anybody got... Uh, have a little think. Have a little think. <laughs> All right? No problem. Nothing too complicated. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's it. <laughs> we can also answer questions from the future if you want. Oh, I love that idea. Okay. Oh, here we are. One from the future. Yes. Yes. going to be the title track. The, the title. album is called Happiness is Near. Yeah. Oh. Well, yeah, we were going to finish off with this song, and we still will, but uh, at the... Um, I was watching a Russian documentary on TV and the woman was speaking Russian to the, not that I can speak Russian, but to the camera and with subtitles and on the wall behind her was written in English, happiness is near. And I thought that's such a good title. So that's where, that's where it came from. <laughs> yeah, so we, we were thinking about that song and um, I was hanging out at Barry's and that crazy creative lightning was bouncing around the room and we had this old really out of tune 12 string That's and we were like clang clang and we were, Barry started talking these beautiful lyrics last thing I remember we were walking under starry skies following a tumbling dream to who knows where just really beautiful pictures These this guy here is a class act songwriter I tell you with his beautiful imagery that's so local and means so much to people Let's give him a round of applause. That's very kind, Delaney. Thank you. And to you. Um, let's just talk about that a little bit more then, Barry. Um, I mean, you've, you've spoke about how the, the lyrics uh, for the work that you and Delaney have created together has kind of just poured out of you. But, I mean, what is your process? Do you have days where you're like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm all over the pen and paper and I'm writing today? Or how, oh. how does it happen? Yeah, I, I do write things down a lot. Uh, I, I have done ever since I was a kid. But um, what I... Uh, mostly other people write them for you because if, you, if you're a writer of any kind, you keep your antennae up and little pieces stick to it. And you, uh, <laughs> and you uh, pick them off and use them. Yeah, you're always listening and storing stuff. Always listening, yeah. Just a uh, matter of keeping your ears, ears and eyes open. But... Uh, I do, I do write down a lot. I, sometimes I write something down because it sounds good. You know, it's like Dylan Thomas said, my poems don't mean anything, but they sound great. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and um, so it's some, something that sounds good where the vowels fall in the right place and it's great to sing, you know. Um, there's all those elements that go into it really, uh, just something, that, something that's got some imagery to it. Has that process for you changed as you've got older and kind of matured? I haven't matured yet. No. Oh. Yeah, I was going to say. What do you mean? As, a, as I said, the going word. backwards. <laughs> I was born in my seventies, and I'm going to go backwards until I think, <laughs> think of dust. We're working the other way around. No, um, no, I've just always written things down. Yeah. Yeah. I used to have lots of. Sometimes people can bring things to life, like. Um, I had a friend, uh, a teacher at primary school called Bob Porteous, and he was Australian, and he, he, uh, he used to read us Banjo Patterson and Henry Lawson, Henry Lawson and people like that, and he'd come right up to you and read a, a, a really good part of the passage, you know, and it really, I really, I just realised the power of the imagery and the words and the land and everything that was in it just took me somewhere, and uh, I sort of unconsciously got on that train, you know. Mm, yeah. Delaney, what about what about you? What's how does it happen for you? This creative thing, how you know? Does it, is it is it something you set aside time for? Is it something that you just kind of go with the flow with? How does it look for you? Well, I totally agree with Barry. What he's saying there about um, the little things that he's talking about with his antenna, I call them seeds. So you're going around collecting seeds. It could be what someone says. It could be a something you see a little melody phrase, anything, and you kind of store them all away until you want to pull them out and look what you've got and nurture them and grow them a little bit. That's a pretty banal analogy for you all there. But um, 
It's kind of like that. And I think if you sit down, you're always going to end up with something. And if you don't end up with something, at least you had some nice time sitting down working with music. (laughs) Like that's a real, you might laugh, young lady, but um, it's (laughs) it's amazing. I am so proud to be a musician. That's what I get to do, you know, like I get to carry this guitar around. And sometimes I, I walk around and I like see myself carrying a guitar and I'm like, this is my tool, you know, this is, that's a real, I think of a little me watching a big me and thinking they might go, whoa, who's that? Or how can they, how can they do what they do with just that guitar or whatever? So for me, it's working with music's always really, really special and you write songs, some of them stick around, some of them go further than others, but if that's always what you're doing, and it's like Barry sits down and plays nearly every day, he doesn't just mm. pull it out when it's time to write a record or something, he's he's living that, so that's yeah something to aspire to as a, as a musician. I never sit down to consciously write anything, really. No. Yeah. Um, in fact, if I try to do that, nothing happens. You know, it's sort of like you know, <laughs> yeah. just got to keep things just in the right place. You know. And yeah, I uh, believe the opposite. I believe in definitely sitting down, and it's like almost nailing your feet to the floor, so you sit at the table for long enough. That's the main thing. Just stay there. Just stay in the ch- in the chair. Don't get up. <laughs> oh, you're hungry. Oh, you need to go to the toilet. Oh, wouldn't it be nice to go and have a cup of coffee down the road at the? No, cafe? we can't do that. Oh, wonder what's on TV. Oh, anything these days. So it's just that matter of pushing other things away and carving out time, taking time for your passion, for your songwriting. Do you... Um, uh, as I, I have been writing a bit recently and, like, every, everything I write is practice. It's everything is practice. There's never... There, there is no end to that journey. Is that something that... I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of getting some tips here from you both and it feels like we've got two different schools of thought, nail your feet to the floor or kind of go with another flow. But it, but in each case, it's always practice. It's always No, applying. I think it's never practice. No? I think you're doing it. If you're doing it, you're doing it. So give up on this concept of practice and just say, I'm doing it. It's not about, what are you practicing for? Well, that shut me up. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't see that. No? You know, I, I understand developing and working on things, but I, yeah. I think it's all valid in some way or other. Maybe it's different for what you're doing. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't see practice as not... It, it's still a product. You know, it's still a mm. thing. Something comes out, but it's the next step to the next thing. You know, it's, it's, it's exercising that muscle. Maybe yeah. that's a better way of putting it. People have we, wildly different ways of doing things. Like, yeah. Like, I tend to keep things at arm's length a lot mm. and just let there be a little avalanche if there is going to be one. Okay. You know, and uh, even con- consciously sort of push something away. And yeah, you're talking about sideways thinking, like peripheral vision. Yeah. You can often see better with your peripheral vision yeah. because you aren't burning it out with things you're looking directly yeah. at. So if you're looking at the sky and you can't see the stars because you've burnt your retina out with LEDs and fluorescent lights and blue screens, look look to the... Look at it from the side, and you these retinal, yeah. these uh, peripheral parts of your retina will be much less. Tam- uh, what's the word? Trampled on than your main part. But I mean, that's a concept with a lot of creativity is to sneak up on it sideways like a crab. Mm. Yeah. But that thing with practicing and me just shutting you down. I didn't mean it to be. I think definitely keep going, but I don't think there's. I don't know. I. I think you're not, if you're doing it, you're doing it. Yeah. I think we could write a book after today, like Delaney and Bruce's. There's um, enough books already out there in that tent. (laughs) (laughs) There's a man wanted to say something over there. Yes. That's both. Mm. Yeah. No one else in my family writes songs, so none none of my grandparents. My grandmother was a poet, but she never she never put words to music. No one else in my family wrote. 
no one else even really plays instruments or sings. My parents used to sing a lot around the house, but they didn't play an instrument. Mm. But they sang a lot, and they had a <clears throat> they had a great love for music, and um, that's where it came from from me, I think. And Barry, your your folks were really supportive of your mm. kind of creative journey and and your interest in music. Yeah, my father especially. I um, mean, when you know what it's like when you're at high school or college, and everybody's parents expect them to be doctor or an astronaut or whatever. And um, well, I did do that, but afterwards <laughs> I didn't tell you about that. Did you retire at the age of 24 from <laughs> Become a songwriter. astronautism? <laughs> and we were working, uh, I was, I was um, working with my father one day on the farm and he, he just said out of the blue, he said, I think you should leave school, follow the music. And that was in uh, the, f the fifth form. Gosh. And uh, it was quite a thing to say, but it came from his... Uh, the, sometimes people live through their kids, and that's what he wanted to do. Mm. And uh, so he sort of pushed me to do it for him. <laughs> well, we're glad he did. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, all yeah, I so can say. I. Yeah. <laughs> um, Delaney, you're... you're uh, um, you know, you're, you're, you're the breakout of your family when it comes to writing music. But were, were you given that kind of support? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then definitely from my dad. I remember being 24 or something, freaking out because I was doing these crummy jobs in pub kitchens in Melbourne and working at some African restaurant somewhere and just being a total, not really knowing what where I was going or what I was doing. Mm -hmm. He's saying, it's fine, don't worry about it, you'll figure it out. He kind of knew I was definitely interested in music and his heart was really in the musical realm. He had an amazing record collection and he um, used to go and see crazy, all these, you know, some of the amazing music that was coming over to New Zealand at the time, the Auckland Town Hall, going and seeing all, anybody he could. He was really into early R&B, blues from Chicago, things like this, Beatles. So I remember his, I mean, you young kids might not remember, but back before the internet, you just had a record collection. You didn't, you can just dial up anything you wanted. And so having his record collection there was pretty amazing because you not only could you not dial, you couldn't get stuff on the internet, but I mean, you just had to, I mean, you could go to the library sometimes and get some records that you were interested in, but just so much wasn't here. I remember Christchurch being talked about as a incredible, um, the connection there with the Antarctic Centre, having been the last stop before the soldiers went down to Antarctica from the States, meant That's you right, could get yeah. records no one else could get in the country. You could get bigger amplifiers, louder amplifiers. So all that stuff having a real influence on Christchurch. And, it sure um, did, yeah. Yeah, just his record collection was all, you know, hundreds of Dylan albums. Well, there was only about 10 back in when I was a kid. <laughs> and... um. You know, just having having all that stuff on hand. Oh, I'm interested in the Kinks. Oh, here's six records of the Kinks, or all, all the early Chess records, or real folk real folk blues albums series like this. Just mean I could dive into those things until I started getting interested in music. He didn't have any of like Guns and Roses and things <laughs> oh. like that. <laughs> that uh, American influence was big in Christchurch because I played out at the bass out at uh, Harewood a couple of times, and. Uh, People had a lot of <clears throat> um, early R and B records and some blues. You know, guys could put a cigarette in their mouth by banging the bottom of the, oh. or the uh, bottom of the pack. Yes, it's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> really cool. <laughs> um, yeah. How? How? Oh, sorry, um, oh, I, I, uh, didn't I mean to. Just... We've got some hands up in the audience. That's what I'm noticing. Yes. Since the 1980s? Oh, it's, it's changed uh, in, the res in the respect that I started out like every songwriter, like role-playing, you know, like I was sort of uh, trying to write sort of Hank Williams songs or Hank Snow or something like that, or early Stone songs, or something like that. But um, nothing ever 
comes out like you think it's going to. I've, I've, I've tried to write a song that says, sounds like, let's say, Time is on my side or something like that, a song, favourite song, but it never comes out like that. So it, it's changed quite a lot in that respect. I, when I first started, I was playing sort of, you know, just role playing as a songwriter. Now I feel like I'm sort of got myself in there. So that's uh, part of it, yeah. That's a lovely way of putting it. We've got another question at the back there. Ah, yeah, good question, and definitely I approach the solo work quite differently from the collaborative work. I think the collaborative work's a lot about listening um, and trying to find who you can be to support a lot of the time, but also just to be, to not get in the way of what the other person's bringing. Except for Barry, I trample all over him. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, not really. Um, yeah, definitely listening a lot more in collaborative work and trying to I mean, you get super enthusiastic, so it's hard to pull yourself out of the picture when you're getting really fired up. But um, hopefully that feeds back on the other person getting ex inspired and excited as well. Yeah, um, the more, the older I get, I guess. It's interesting Barry saying about um, putting himself in the music because a lot of young protagonist songwriter style writing is to say, and I did this and I did that, but listening to Barry's lyrics, he'll just say, um, oh, the trees are doing this, something about the weather or the sky, and you know he's not talking about, the, he's talking about his own world, he's not talking about, he is talking about the weather and the trees in the sky, but he's using those to put himself in the picture, even though he's invisible in that picture. So um, I think that's, that's something you're looking for in collaboration too. You're trying to you're trying to suggest a world and be part of it, but also be kind of invisible in it. Or um, it's like you're the one angling the light. So you're trying to show the sides of the people that you think you can see, and you want other people to see them too. That is a very thoughtful answer, and. All I'm I'm learning lots here and kind of take squirreling away. I don't know how other people are feeling, but I feel like um, you know I can I can apply some of these uh, thoughts um, uh, getting generated up here on stage. Yes, we've got a lovely um, uh, another question here. Yeah, of course I would. I mean, it's to a, to a large extent, being an artist of any kind is about following. And uh, you've just got to follow the thread. And I think uh, I would encourage anyone to do that. Follow, uh, just grab hold of it and follow it. Yeah, I I'd, I'd certainly would encourage them to do it, yeah. And I think, you know, it does take a certain amount of courage you know, doesn't it as well? Yeah. Uh, and um, you know, the the ability to kind of step outside of the normal uh, channels, or you know, what other other people are expecting of you or wanting of you. Um, you know, you both have carved quite incredible paths through this. Uh, you know, through the last thirty, forty years. Um, how do you, what do you think of the, um, you know, the current state or, or the environment for musicians currently? Is it, is it easy for people to, to oh, it's never easy, but um, how does it, how does it compare today, do you think, for somebody just starting out to when either of you were on that pathway in the, in the beginning? Well, I'd say it's a lot harder these days because when I first started playing, there was very few people doing it. Mm. And uh, so the, the canvas was quite blank, and uh, that's changed a lot. I mean, it, your dentist is making an album these days, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
you're also, um, I think it's really dangerous because young creatives are sold a dream. That, um, And I've seen billboards at the Auckland airport saying, get a bigger broadband plan so you can take your creative content to the world mm. faster. I'm like, okay, they're using that promise of being a creative musician, artist, whatever, to sell telephone plans to people. I mean, it's pretty strange. But I, no I notice there's a lot of that now that young people are saying, oh, why is it so hard? And it never was never was easy, but <laughs> it's, um, yeah, there's huge saturation in the market nowadays that people are up against. And then you've got people who are huge on TikTok or whatever, but the, what, how does that translate? Can they mm. make a living from it? Or would anyone come to see a show if they even did one? Do people do gigs yeah. anymore? There's so many things people are trying to, you know, how do they, they write a song, they record it, they get it produced. It sounds like another Lord song, so they think it's going to be the next best thing. But then you're like, well, how are you going to put on a show? Mm. Are you going to do this down at the local pub, this song? or It's just, you know, there's a lot of disconnect about what people are sold and yeah. what is actually a reality. And if you just sit down and talk about what is the actual reality of being an artist, there's a hundred million options for you. And as Barry says, an incredible life to follow and a thread, but is that what people think when they think they want to be a musician or do they want to be stepping out of a limo or what do they want, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think there's a, just people aren't often on, on the same page of what they think it is to be one of those things because they all they see is the what's called the show reel, you know, best moments on Instagram. You don't see how long it took them to make that or mm. how they had, they had really bad sleep that night or whatever. <laughs> and the other side of it too is the, uh, it's very much, like you said, it's very much sold to them as a, <clears throat> as a music business. But um, people like ourselves, we did a lot of touring, which, which uh, produces music it's by itself, you know, movement and connection with people. And uh, when you make music from a bedsit or, or a studio or something like that, that component isn't there. So it sort of almost goes back to an old sort of blues sort of um, system, you know. Yeah. Journeyman stuff. Yeah. yeah, journeyman stuff, yeah. And I, th I think there's something to be said about even, you know, environments like this and, and the whole book town uh, kind of vibe where you're, where you get to meet people and you bump up against people and you have these incredible conversations and these incredible opportunities to listen and speak with, um, you know, people who are creating and, and doing, doing the, the mahi in that, in that sense and, and I and I think there's that really interpersonal connection that you've reminded us about. You know that it's not, um, you know, what do people want when they create? And I think this is a lot mm. to do with it. This feels very important. You know, to be able to bring your music to people and people listen and we all enjoy it together in a mm. in a communal sense. And I think there's something about the the music. You know, but let's just take it back to you know, word gets around. There's something very um, personal about that communication of that record. There's something really, uh, you know, yeah. there's a narrative, you know? Yeah, that record yeah. does talk. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah, so an instant. You're in the moment with that record. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. It got me to CrossFit in double quick time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's an endorsement. If you're <laughs> yeah, <right>. That's right. <laughs> Um, I've, I'm not sure how time is going, but I'm I'm just in, in a bit of a dream up here. But um, obviously, uh, you you know, you've got future plans and and things are happening. We've got a new album to look forward to, which will be every, on everybody's um, uh, wish list. Um, what else are you doing together or individually that we can be looking out for and cheering you on? Delaney, let's start with you. Cheering you on. That's cheering a, you what on. A great <laughs> That's a good. That's a good thought. <laughs> cheering you on. Um, I got a. I just put out an album in March, and I toured that recently. But there's still that's a, that's my latest offering into the musical oeuvre, whatever you call it. I have mine. This uh, solo album number ten. So that felt like a bit of a milestone to get that out. <laughs> Thank you. And um, so I'll be heading off to Europe June July and maybe some of August to tour to that through Eastern Europe and some Balkan states and other areas, which will be 
I'm not sure how that's going to go. Um, <laughs> hopefully, I'm, hopefully it's fun. Do you enjoy the touring, Delaney? I used to really, it was a big part of my identity and a big part of my life, but these, mm. since COVID, um, it, I've, there's been some real big changes, obviously, and it's been five years since I've been back to those markets, and I'm feeling like a different person. Yeah. Uh, I feel like I have a different relationship to Aotearoa as well through my um, spending time here, connecting with artists based here. Um, so yeah, the rest of the world in some ways definitely feels like a, an old friend to go and visit and reconnect with, but in other ways almost has a feeling of irrelevancy in some ways too when you look at um, what can be done here or what, what you could connect with or focus on within this country. There's so much to be done, it feels mm. like. Yeah. But I'm really, yeah, definitely excited about... Um, yeah, it's driving for hours on end, really. I <laughs> <laughs> and and what about you, Barry? What's well, what's I'm I've a couple of songs short of a new album with the Waratahs, which has happened quite by accident. We've just been recording songs, and suddenly there's sort of nine songs there recorded and a couple of videos. So I'll do that, and uh, I don't think we'll ever tour like we used to. We'll, we'll, we'll do shorter tours because uh, we used to go out there for like three, five weeks at a time and uh, and uh, I don't think we'll be doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, um, and then so there's um, our album, we're, our second album we're looking forward to releasing. Yeah, right? October-ish. Yeah. yeah. It'll be a tour as well? We're gonna yeah, we're going to yeah. come to Featherston for like Good. three weeks in a row. <laughs> <Yeah. solid. laughs> we're going to get it. That get, sounds we're right. going to do a residency here. Yeah. Oh, well, I think we can accommodate. Um, wonderful. Um, I know that uh, Delaney and Barry want to go out on a song, which seems only fair. So uh, I, I just want to thank you for a, a really lovely conversation. I wasn't sure how thank it you. was all going to go because you both had very strong ideas about how they was all going to start. So, But I knew I was in really good hands. And I hope that you feel looked after too. And I hope um, that you feel looked after because it's been a real privilege. And I've certainly learned a lot. And, um, and I hope you have. I'm more practicing. You're, you're totally practicing. And thank you for your questions as well. Um, really yes. gorgeous audience. Is there any questions to just before we stop questions? Anyone got anything they're going to be lying awake wishing they'd ask? No. Oh, hang on. Yeah. Here we go. Oh, I think a lot of hip hop artists would completely disagree with you there. <laughs> what do you think? No, Barry? I, do you no, think no I, I, I actually quite enjoy that sort of music. Um, uh, 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 it's not what I do, but uh, it I, is actually because a lot of word gets around as yeah, I looped it, yeah. drums. So uh, <laughs> I, I forgot about that bit. Yeah, I think it's. I, I totally hear what you're saying, yeah. and I perform live concerts with a loop machine so I better than anyone will agree with you that it is anti-music I totally hear what you're saying but I think through trance and repetition you can build stuff over the top of that that can be really great and I'd, I would be a fool to uh, talk against my dear <laughs> sweet loop machine that has taken me around the world but um, I, I hear your pain with the death of the life in the moment there was one more question at the back. I saw a, a hand. Yes. Yeah. Are you asking, do you still think radio is relevant? Yeah. Absolutely. I think any way you can broadcast yeah. anything, if it's even Spotify is the big demon we all talk about, right? And they're assholes, we all know it, and we get 0.003 of a cent per stream for our songs, but um, what an incredible music library that is, that you have to balance out the good with the bad, and the bad's pretty bad, but the good you can, the good from something like Spotify is, it, it can't be denied, and I think radio too, you have people presenting music that 
people would never hear otherwise. So I think, um, yeah, you can find a radio station you like and stream it online. And if you find one that really suits you, that's great because it's just another source of music in the end. Yeah, they're out there. Yeah. Okay. No more questions, I'm afraid. We're up to time, but we are going to go out on a song. Big round of applause, though, please. This is a hymn to you good people. Somebody's written on the wall, happiness is near. Yeah, happiness is near. Happiness is near. Happiness is near. Happiness is near. Happiness is near Happiness is near It's coming over the horizon now Coming over the horizon now It's coming over the horizon now Lift up, let go Leave it all by the side of the road Let it echo in the world In every song that you sing Yeah, you can walk these days And remember them in any way that you want and On a day like today you could be anything Cause honey, that's the way it is That's the line in the sand Somebody shouted from the roof Happiness is near 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 It's coming over the horizon now Coming over the now it's coming over the horizon now it's coming over the horizon now it's coming over the horizon now happiness is near barry saunders delaney davidson happy days <laughs>